There is in existence today an extraordinary part. Following the German invasion of Poland in 1940 and prior Japanese invasions of China in the 1930s, the world has found itself in a new kind of war. I'll spare the details, but somewhere at some point, war breaks out in the former Italian African colonies. No, not the North Africa one. The East Africa one. Yes, Ethiopia. But, but, but Kabutos. I thought Ethiopia was the only African colony never conquered by Europeans. Yeah, until Mussolini did. So now we got Italian Ethiopia and Eritrea and Somalia. So then you may ask, what happened in that theater? How come no one talks oh about it? Oh my god, will you shut? Well, for starters, it involved the German Nazi. Oh, 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 can't say that. I can't say that. I'll get demonetized. So, um, it doesn't involve the German Hydra soldiers. Yes. Thank you, Marvel. The Italians also lost, of course. Or else you'd be speaking Italian, wouldn't you? It also doesn't involve German Hydra soldiers. So you know Western media doesn't care. Even at the time. Anyways, the fight wasn't something to ignore. It was three years worth of fighting from 1940 to 1943. That's not what I'm going to be talking about today, no. What I'm going to bring up is even more obscure than this theater in general. That the Germans WERE INVOLVED IN THIS THEATER! Shrek mate, atheists. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Compagnia Autocorata Tedesca. Also, in English, the German Motorized Company! All 150 of them! Oh. <clears throat> Before June 10, 1940, sometime before the start of the war, there were German civilians and prior service members on board merchant ships traveling all around the Indian Ocean. Some from the British colonies of Tanganyika and Kenya. They came in ships such as the Italian steamship, the Piav. When rumors of the war breaking out began, many of the ships docked and remained in ports in the modern day Eritrea and Somalia. On the infamous day of January 10th, 1940, when Italy declared war on Britain and France, all those people in merchant ships were so glad that they were docking in these ports that they began to be radicalized under Mussolini's regime and demanded to become Italian full time. Those are some of my favorite foods. Just kidding. Some decided to join the Italian military and swear their allegiance to His Majesty the King of Italy and Albania and Emperor of Ethiopia, Victor Emmanuel III. The ones that joined consisted of those that couldn't fight at all, ones who had service in the Wehrmacht, and a couple who fought in the First World War. At the end of June 1940, these Germans that embarked from these ships into Italian Ethiopia began to be mobilized in Azamara, the capital of Italian Eritrea, under the Italian army. A fun fact, the crew of the German tugboat Kyonga also volunteered to fight under the Italian Navy command by being a minesweeper, but under a German flag for some reason. On July 2nd, 1940, the German motorized company, also known in Italian as the Compagnia Autocorata Tedesca, CAT, was finally formed. Eritrean Governor General Luigi Frusci wrote in a report. Today, a German motorized company was formed. As commander, I exited my greetings to those sons of the National Socialist Germany who have volunteered for uniforms to share with us the glory and the weight of the war that we are waging together in the name of justice. Eight days later, a ceremony was created in the garrison where they were situated at fitted with a parade and everything. The day after that, they began their training and shooting of live ammunition. It was planned that this German Hydra company would be under the Northern Group, under General Frusci, and reported directly to General Vincenzo Edesatore. As the company kept training, the Italians began their invasion of French Somaliland and actually were able to push out the British and Allied forces for once. One. What just happened? So successful was this campaign that the German 
SS Security Service reports describe Italians are making faster progress than they used to be in Ethiopia. At the time, it was assumed from these reports that the Germans were involved with this campaign, given the negative reputation of the Italian army at the time. However, the first instance of the German motorized company engaging in combat did not start until October 1940. On October 3rd, 1940, the Italian Ministry of War defined rules for recruiting foreign military. Sounds like military contractors to me! And whether they should be held at the rank of their country of origin, which does not apply to Eritrea and Ethiopian troops because they don't have a military. <laughs> The uniform and equipment consisted of standard Royal Italian Army uniform, a German swastika where the collar rank would be on an Italian uniform, as well as a swastika on top of their helmet slash colonial troop hat, and one German Hydra armband on the left arm with square swastika instead of the angled one that we are traditionally used to seeing on German Hydra officials. And on the opposite arm would be a triangular Italian flag to let you know who really is in charge. Thank you, General Fushi. The company would consist of two rifle platoons and one machine gun platoon. Each rifle platoon had two squads each, while the machine gun platoon would have three, armed with one MG-07 for each squad. October 9th, 1940, a German newspaper called Die Wehrmacht published several photos of the unit in Italian Eritrea training and using dreaded Italian machine guns and vehicles. This was before the Africa Corps was born, so you know this is based. A senior sergeant of the company, Adolf Brunner, described an account featured in the newspaper article, as I have said prior if you doubted me, that the first volunteer swore oath to His Majesty, the King of Italy and Albania and the Emperor of Ethiopia, Victor Emmanuel III, but only for the duration of his service under the Italian flag. This was all occurring 10.30 a.m. on the day of the ceremony. Mid-October, the German company fitted with Italian uniforms began their march to Kassala, British Sudan. The UK be like... By early November 1940, Die Deutsche Kompanie arrives in the Sugandese city of Kassala. The area around Kassala. The company began its first baptism by fire, attacking British colonial forces in what is now known as the Battle of the Conquest of Kassala. Basically, the Italians beat the British forces and take the town. They occupied it for like two months before the British were able to figure out how to push the spaghetti people out. This was all in January 22nd, 1941. The Italians abandoned the border city of Kassala, and of course, of course, the Germans had to cover their retreat. The German company essentially became rearguard units covering the retreat of the main Italian army units. They picked up their gear, weapons, and trucks and headed towards Asmara, but not long before being stopped by Agordat after the Anglo-Indian British force were able to devastate the retreating Italian column heading towards Asmara. Thus begins the Battle of Agordat on January 26, 1940. The first commander of the CAT German truck company, Lieutenant Gustav Hamel, who was also a reserve officer in the First World War, was so bad at his job that he was eventually replaced by Lieutenant Heinz Werner Schmidt, who flew all the way from Germany just to take his place. January 28, 1941, the German Foreign Legion fought hard, covering the rear of the Italians, consisting of Scari, black shirts, and the remains of Lieutenant Amadeo Gouye's Amara Cavalry Squad, as the relentless British offensive fitted with better vehicles and weapons, pushed their way into the end of January, where the Italians pushed their way back to Charen. Charen? The site of the, one of the most famous battles of this theater of World War II. The German company finally reached Charen and prepared itself for battle as the British and South African forces hurled themselves into the city in the following days. The company quickly went from 140 to 150 men to now a dwindling 39 soldiers. Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, to add further injury, the commander of the German company, Heinz Schmidt, was apparently very famous because he wrote a book about this whole thing and, you know, his further exploits, which I'm about to get to. 
left Eritrea to go to Libya. Why? Because he's uh, going to become an aide cup to Aaron Rommel. Yes, the famous guy that controlled the German Africa Corps that you see in Call of Duty and Sniper Elite video games. But somehow, he's able to command the unit from that far? Uh, I couldn't find anything else on this, so I'll assume that they're under control of the dwindling Italian forces, which turns out to be true. March 27, 1941, after a long month's battle, the Italians finally gave up their positions, leaving only 20 Germans left in the motorized company. Oh, lord, sad days. Some of the Italians they covered managed to retreat to Azamora and engage in battles with the Allied forces before being eventually crushed. The remaining Germans in the company made a long trek down to Amba Alagi under command of the Duke of Ayas. May the 4th be with you, 1941, with British forces in the north and west and Ethiopian resistance in the south. The Italian forces have nowhere to run. They fought until extinction. Mm, I can't wait to get my hands on you. In March 19, 1941, the Italian forces surrendered to the Allies. The unit was destroyed. But like I said, according to L.T. Heinz Werner Schmidt, some of the remaining German troops managed to escape through four Italian submarines and reached Hydra-occupied France in May 1941. Thus ends the fantastic tale of the Germans in Ethiopia. I'd like to thank God for the internet existing to allow me to see this information that was portrayed in uh, first-hand accounts, second-hand sources. And I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and maybe find use for it in your life. Thank you. Have a good day.